Hello, this is Terry with Blade Outdoors and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be answering a question from a subscriber and his name is Dan Dotson. And his question was about the trailer that I purchased and built my teardrop camper on. Now, I've been using my teardrop camper for about one and a half years and I've taken six camping trips on it and I've driven or and towed the camper probably about 1200 miles total so he's asking things about how well has the trailer held up uh, what's the low capacity how does it tow and also the gas mileage that I'm getting with my tow vehicle as I am towing it or what's the gas mileage without towing the camper so what I'm going to be doing is first of all showing you the the trailer that I bought, uh, how I modified the trailer, because I needed to do that a little bit. And then I will answer the rest of his questions as I show you snippets of videos on those six camping trips that I've already taken. So let's get right into it. So here is the Harbor Freight trailer that I bought to use, of course. And the first thing I had to do was take off uh, the wood siding and the flooring that was used to uh, carry cargo with. So uh, I got rid of all the wood and uh, just uh, took everything down to the bare trailer itself. Next, I used my power washer to uh, clean the dirt and grime off the trailer and also identify any places where the paint may be coming off or any spots that might be rusted. And sure enough, I did find several places that was rusted, so I decided to take the trailer wheels off and the springs off, set it up on some uh, saw horses so I could easily work on it and uh, really take a, a look at it to see what needed to be done. I found rusted bolts that needed to be cleaned and replaced, so I used power tools to go ahead and do that. So I basically took it apart and put it back together. Once it was together, I decided to use some steel L brackets and weld on the bottom of the trailer for reinforcement. Although the trailer came with a brand new light system, I did find some bad electrical connectors, so I changed those connectors out. And then I put everything back together and got some Rust-Oleum paint and painted the bottom of the trailer to prevent rust in the future. This particular model of Harbor Freight, the tongue actually was bolted on and folded for storage. So what I decided to do for extra strength was go ahead and just weld the tongue to the main part of the frame. And I also left the bolts on there too, just for extra strength. Then I added another piece of steel L bracket uh, at the tongue so I could mount my tongue box on. Then it was time to put my tongue box in which was going to hold my ion phosphate battery and also my other electrical equipment. And then I bolted my tongue box to the tongue using some nuts and bolts right into the steel of the tongue itself. I also add a, added two stabilizers in the front and two stabilizers in the back. And these stabilizers are meant to do exactly what their name is to stabilize the camper. It's not to be used for leveling, just stabilizing. And you just use a bar to uh, get it nice and level. As uh, I continued to build, I was waiting on uh, new wheels and tires to come. And while I was waiting for the new wheels and tires, I decided to take the hub off of the axle, clean the axle off. I purchased some new bearings and I went ahead and uh, got greased and packed the bearings with some new grease. And then I put my hubs back together mounted them on my axle, and then I had mounted my new wheels and tires and made sure that everything was good there. Next, I decided to add a backup camera. Even though I wouldn't use a backup camera all the time for backing up, what I really wanted to do is just to see what was behind me, and I could do that with a screen 
in my tow vehicle and this was connected to the camera wirelessly which uh, worked out really great at that point my trailer was basically done so uh, I just added some artwork on the outside and uh, I think it looked really nice and of course on the back at the galley I named my camper the cantina and you can look at the bill series to see everything I did and why I named it the cantina the camper was designed to be pulled by a Jeep Wrangler and the Wrangler only had a total capacity of a thousand pounds and a tongue weight capacity of only 500 pounds so after weighing everything the camper itself came in to be about 900 pounds empty and the tongue weight itself was about 70 pounds plenty light enough to be pulled by the Jeep Wrangler. Well, my first camping trip with the camper was at South Alabama. And as you notice, I replaced the Jeep with a 4Runner. And that was to uh, quadruple my load capacity and tongue weight, just uh, in case I wanted to add more weight in the camper itself. I took side roads in the interstate and it towed great, no swaying, no bumping. Uh, really, I didn't even notice it was there. Uh, my camping area was semi-primitive. I had an extension cord that I ran out for power and I had some faucet water nearby that I could use to uh, get some water and I uh, had a great time there in South Alabama on my first camping trip. On my second camping trip, it was in central Alabama uh, in a remote area of some friend's property. And I had to use my four wheel drive uh, to get down uh, a rough road, uh, really timber roads, and it worked great. Uh, this is my, my campsite. It was all primitive there and I uh, had a great time. One thing I learned um, as I was leaving was that the turn radius itself for the camper being towed by the full runner was great. I mean, I was able to turn, this had to be at least a 30 to 35 degree turn back on itself. And uh, just being in a four wheel drive, pulling it, and the way it handled uh, in that uh, terrain was just great. On my third camping trip, I went to Northwest Alabama, close to Jasper. As you can see, it was fairly muddy there. And again, I had to use four-wheel drive, and I really put the camper and trailer to a test by going down this steep hill that was muddy, had protruding rocks in it, bumps, holes, uh, very nasty going down and up this hill. And I was kind of concerned I would either break or bend the uh, trailer itself, but it held up great. No problems at all going down or up. The campsite itself uh, was great. We had a great time there. As you can see, there were some improvements over the campsite set up over the past two trips. For my fourth trip, I went to DeSoto State Park in Alabama, and I towed the camper on both back rows, but mostly interstate. And I was very impressed on how the camper towed. No swaying, no bumping, no swerving. It really proved to be great on the interstate. This was my setup at uh, DeSoto. I had uh, shore power and water the first time I had that. And that was a great luxury. I also even had a gas uh, little uh, fire pit here, which uh, proved to be invaluable because it was really cold up there those few days. My fifth camping trip was to Jackson Lake Island, Alabama. And again, I used back roads, uh, interstate, and also went through some small towns pretty slow. And both trips, this trip and the DeSoto trip, gave me a good idea on uh, my gas mileage. So without towing the camper, I get about 18.5 miles a gallon. But with the camper, I was getting 17.5 miles a gallon and uh, I thought that was pretty good. Here's the campsite that we had there and uh, the views and the weather were just great the whole time we were there. 
This was my sixth and last trip, uh, and it was to Jemison, Alabama. And this camping trip was kind of a unique camping trip. We had a great place to stay. There was a lake there. We actually camped out on a peninsula. It was really great. Uh, we had at least a night or two of good weather. Uh, we had some fire and was able to cook, but then we had a storm move in from the Gulf, and we were expecting 35 mile an hour gusts but uh, we really didn't have that. Uh, we had about 20 to 25 mile an hour, but what it did demonstrate on this camping trip was that towing the camper itself uh, through 20 to 25 mile an hour gusts was no problem at all. Uh, didn't have any issues at all with towing the camper back home. Okay, that's it uh, for a review of how this Harbor Freight trailer has performed as a bed for my teardrop camper and uh, I'm pleased with it so far. This is a summary and again I want to thank uh, Dan for asking this question so I could share it with everybody and from the summary perspective um, would I use the Harbor Freight trailer again and the answer is going to be yes it was very economical and finding a used one for that price was good. Uh, I do recommend that you do enhancements. In other words, putting the steel on there uh, to give it some strength, uh, welding that on, definitely strengthen it and out, keep it square. And uh, also I would recommend uh, getting some true good wheels and trailer tires. Uh, this lifted the camper up a little bit, maybe an inch or so and uh, the speed that I could go with these tires as towing speed was 65 miles an hour, which was better over the original wheels that came with the Harbor Freight trailer, which was limited to 55 miles an hour. And again, this Harbor Freight trailer is a four foot by eight foot trailer. The load capacity was 1,500 pounds, even though I did my build out to be a less than that to meet the towing vehicle at the time that was the forerunner but I could have added a lot more weight on to that. If I had over to do it over again I probably would have added some more little luxury items to the camper itself. Uh, it tows really great. Uh, I've never noticed any swaying, no bumping. Every time I slow down and stop or start you know, it just feels like you're pulling a regular trailer. There's, there's nothing that really pushes you when you're stopping or, or you really have to, you know, really use the engine of the tow vehicle to start pulling it. It's no problem at all. And the uh, mileage that you get, like I said before, in this 4Runner, without towing, I was getting uh, 18.5 miles per gallon and towing this lightweight teardrop. You know, it's only 17.5 miles per gallon, and that's an average over the interstate going through back roads and also going through small towns. So I hope uh, this answered your questions, Dan, and uh, anybody else that's got the question about maybe using uh, one of these Harbor Freight trailers. I think it's good. I haven't went out of the state. Uh, I'm just building up confidence to do that and ensuring that everything's gonna go well. And I do recommend periodic inspections, at least at least once a year. I do mine probably every six months, but at least once a year, do those inspections. Um, if you're financially at a point where you can't afford a good trailer, I think these Harbor Freight trailers are good. Just do the enhancements. I do once also want to state that if I was financially able to build my own custom-made trailer with independent suspension on each tire and wheel, I would have done that. Or if I could have afforded someone to build one, a customer, I would have done that. I just wanted to say that in the up front. But overall, overall, this is a good platform to build your tier drop trailer on. I haven't had a problem with it. And again, do that periodic maintenance of checking the uh, condition of the trailer and also your variants. So I uh, hope this was informative. I hope you liked the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that share and notification button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.